Hey, squadron mates. Dan the Plastic Man here. Hope you guys are doing well. Time for a snapshot review. Today, we'll be taking a look at the high-grade Gundam Age 3 Normal from the series Mobile Suit Gundam Age. So, as always, pull up a chair, get a cup of your favorite drink, sit back, relax, and let's get into this. So after everything is snapped together, you're going to have a core fighter, the core base, which is called the G-Scepter, and you're going to also have a stand. For those who don't know, Gundam Age tried to pay homage to all of the Universal Century series, and the Age 3 here was an homage to the Gundam Double Zeta. Taking a look here at the core fighter, it's pretty simple, just a couple colors, clear cockpit, not really much to write home about, no weapons or anything, just a way to transport the Gundam's head and the upper part of the chest is what I'll call it. We do have some interesting details, had to pick them out in black with some markers, and you do actually get a little bit of articulation with the engine pod right there and then you've got these two fins that are on the side of the core pod that can be swiveled for mobile suit mode. Now here's where the bread and butter comes in with the G Scepter. This pretty much is a flight mode for the arms and legs. And then of course you've got the big honking gun right there up top. I will say that I like the design of this. I would like to tweak a few things, but I do like the look of, you know, just the way this guy comes together and everything. As with most of your age kits, you do get a display stand. This one can swivel. It has two points of connection for flight mode or for mobile suit mode, and they can be adjusted, even if the joint is a bit stiff. There you go. And again, you just got three little teeth that you can align. What I like, though, is you can store your spare hands underneath the stand. You also get just the regular mobile suit torso. There is a lot of parts forming that happens with the H3 line, but it's kind of part and parcel for the high grade. So, let's make the normal. Pull the rifle off, and we'll just go ahead and set that aside. Next. We're going to separate the legs from the cockpit part of the G Scepter. We'll go ahead and straighten the legs out. I will warn you guys, on mine, when I separated the front skirts, they really decided to fall apart on me. And you've got the legs all together right there. Now we take the mobile suit mode torso, pop that on, remove the arms from the flight torso. Not a bad looking piece if I'm honest. Now we just open up the arms, rotate the hand, and move the fins as need be. Plug the arms onto the mobile suit torso, and you can see we're really starting to bulk out here. Definitely reminiscent of Double Zeta. Now take the core fighter, open it up, and there's the head and the H system chest piece, I guess is what we want to call that. Just flip the chest piece up like that, and plug it in. Done and done. Now for the core fighter. Take those fins I mentioned, rotate them 90 degrees, adjust your thruster pods as you see fit, and plug the core fighter onto the back, and you have yourself a Gundam H3 normal. 
just minus his gun. But that's an easy fix. Just open up, move down the trigger handle, and that slides into the Gundam's hand quite easily. So taking a look at the details, I gotta say this thing does pull off a bit of an homage to Double Zeta like they planned. I really like the size and the heft of the rifle, but I still would have done some different design cues if I'm gonna be honest. Still though, for the cost, I think it definitely conveys the power of the mobile suit itself. Now for some articulation. The head will go up, the head will go down. You can easily get a full Exorcist 360. You can get a funky chicken if you have smaller fingers than me. And then you can also get an, oh no he did not. Shoulders will fully rotate 360, no hindrances. Both fins are movable. You have a very, very tight bicep swivel and double hinged elbow. You've got rotation for the beam saber cover and the standard ball socket wrist that has never changed. The covers on the forearms are meant to hold the beam sabers but if I'm honest, they're a bit of a pain to get out. Plus, when you can just plug the blade into the end like that, no real need. Decent ab crunch and waist swivel. The legs, though, have a lot of good posability. Back skirt will move up and down, side skirt's up and down. Again, though, be very careful with the front skirts. When I separated mine, they love to pop out. Leg will come up, leg will go back. Nice split. Another very tight swivel joint at the thigh. Really good double bend at the knee. And as you can see, some knee armor does move. Great ankle swivel, rotate, and then the toe does move, but that's more for transformation, but you can get some decent poses out of it. And as you can see by this, finding a decent pose doesn't take very long. I know it's not the best, but it's still a pretty good pose in and of itself. So, do I recommend this kit, guys? Honestly, yes. It's a fun little high grade. I definitely think it's worth picking up. You can usually find it for about 15 to 20 bucks, so... I think they did a decent job with it. It conveys the power of the anime, and... It gets a solid pass from me. Also, since the review is now done, I would like to give a brief heads up to Mr. Menard Lubagon. I still have not heard from you, sir, and I definitely need to hear from you so you can claim your prize that you won with the 1,000 subscriber giveaway, sir. And... That pretty much takes care of it, guys. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, leave me a like, subscribe. If you're new to the squadron, welcome. Please be sure to check out all the links in the description to Discord, Patreon, and take care of yourselves, guys. I will see you at the next video. Bye-bye.